Welcome back to AM Buffalo. Now this week is all about our pets. Friday is National Dog Day and today is International Blind Dog Day. And on Monday, we marked National Take Your Cat to the Vet Day. They sleep a lot. Cats spend between 12 to 16 hours a day sleeping. Purring has multiple meanings. This is like little tidbits of information here. Cats purr when they're content, but also when they're feeling stressed. So that's important to know. And today, of course, being Pet Talk Tuesday, we have a special guest on our show. Actually, two special guests this morning, Dr. Friedman and Mac, her fair, fairly furry, somewhat furry friend, fat, uh, Sphinx cat, I should say, uh, Mac. And Mac is just getting acquainted with our new set. Thank you so much for being on our show. Of course, no problem. Dr. Friedman, we're talking about going back to the vet. I know it's kind of tricky for some folks because a lot of people change the way they do things mm -hmm. because of the pandemic. But it is now an acceptable time to come back and you probably should have been getting your pets checked even through the pandemic yes. if they needed it, correct? Yes, so a lot of places went to curbside just like we did for mm -hmm. um, a lot of other things, um, but most practices are now going back in in-person exams. Um, I think a lot of places are still offering curbside if you prefer that. Some people actually like, you know, just having someone come take the carrier out of their car, they get their exam inside and then the doctor gives them a call with their exam, but absolutely if your vet was backed up or anything, during the pandemic, get them back in for their checkups. Oh, I love Mac. Look at Mac's face. <laughs> the eyes are so beautiful. Yeah. So talking about eyes on our cats, mm -hmm. how important is it for them to get regular checkups for their eyes? Yeah, so eye care is really important. Annual exams for every pet once a year is important, but the big things that we worry about with their eyeballs, um, especially because they can't tell us when they don't feel well, for sure. um, taking them in if you notice cloudiness in their eyes or if they're squinting their eyes, um, a lot of redness or obviously any sort of trauma, bring them right into the emergency room because their eyes can get really damaged really quickly. Oh yes, but look at Max's eyes. Max, Mac doesn't have that problem. Oh, thank you. You're going to come with me now. Okay, so now Mac is going to okay, climb He likes me. to climb shoulders. So here we go. He's a climber. All cats are. I have a cat at home. His name is Chop Chop. He's oh, a big, big furry cat, yeah. tabby, American tabby. So I want to like just grab Mac, even though Mac's like, no, I'm just getting acquainted with you. I don't know you that well. Don't grab me. He just wants to explore. So for all of our pets, one of the things we should know in terms of emergencies, you right. know, it's always tricky because you always want to <laughs> hope that you don't have to worry about that right. sort of thing. But what happens is we become unprepared. Right. So knowing these things in advance are very important, correct? So right. what is the procedure? If you encounter an emergency with your pet, what's the first step? So I would say definitely make sure that you know where the closest veterinary emergency clinic mm -hmm. is. We're lucky in that there's at least three 24-hour clinics in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. um, and give them a call just to let them know what's going on obviously if it's a really life-threatening emergency call them on the way or you know just show up but it's really helpful if we can be prepared for the emergency we can let you know what the wait time is gonna be we can also give you advice on what to do in the meantime while you're bringing them into the clinic yes. um, I work in an emergency clinic and it's very busy but we love when everyone calls ahead because then we can be best prepared to help out your pet sure sure exactly and so is there anything you need to bring with you um if it's a life-threatening emergency, just get in the car. Drop everything and, and go. Yes, drop everything and go. But if you can, if you have vaccine rec records or just any sort of medical records, it's really helpful, especially in an emergency, because your vet's not open for us to call and be like, oh, he had blood work last year, but we don't know what it looked like, that sort of thing. So it's always nice to get printouts whenever you go to the vet of not just your receipts, but the actual medical records. Mm -hmm. So that, that way, in an emergency, we can be best prepared to treat your pet. Well, you know what? Thank you so much for all of this information. Yeah. I know it's not all it's not everything we want to think about <laughs> you know you, you, the last thing you want to think about is actually something bad happening to right. your pets but preparation is always key no matter it's your pets or your loved ones right. so dr friedman mac thank you so much for being on am buffalo this morning cutie kitty we <laughs> love you even though you're kind of just like maybe one or two more visits and i'll feel a little bit more comfortable on the set but yes thank you so much for your yeah, time no problem all righty it's pet talk tuesday and thank you so much of course to niagara frontier veterinary society of course for being our friends and giving us information if you'd like more information about keeping your pets and your loved furry ones safe there's the information on the screen